let's do an example with the alternating series test. Very frequently, alternating series have this form. Negative one raised to either the n or the n plus one times some terms. As long as these terms are always positive, this negative one to a power will produce an alternating series. And this alternating series converges. To demonstrate that using the alternating series test, we only need to show two things. We need the limit as n goes to infinity of these terms to equal zero, which we certainly have. And we need the first term of the series to be greater than the second, to be greater than the third, to be greater than the fourth. And we do have that. One over n is greater than one over n plus one. That is to say that a sub n is greater than a sub n plus one always. And that is all we need to say that this series converges. We'll end this video with the observation that the alternating series test can never tell you that an alternating series diverges. If an alternating series does not satisfy the conditions of the alternating series test, it might still converge. And you just can't use the alternating series test to determine that fact. We can give a quick example of this that will also give an application of absolute convergence. The sum from one to infinity of negative one to the n minus first power times one over n squared. And this is not the example I'm going to give, this alternating series converges via the alternating series test. But more than that, this alternating series converges via absolute convergence. If you take these terms and you put them inside an absolute value, The absolute value kills this negative one to a power, and you're left 
with a convergent P series. So this series converges absolutely. Now, a theorem of absolute convergence is that if a series converges absolutely, you can rearrange its terms. So what we're going to do with this series is pair off its terms like so, and swap them. This is a convergent alternating series. That it's alternating, you can clearly see. That it converges, well, because this converges absolutely, this converges, and thanks to the absoluteness, when we swap terms around, it doesn't affect convergence. But it does not satisfy the conditions of the alternating series test. One is greater than one fourth, one ninth is greater than one sixteenth, one twenty fifth is greater than one thirty sixth. 149th is greater than 164th, and so on. We do not have decreasing terms, even though their limit is going to zero. It's not going to zero monotonically. So here's an example of a convergent series whose convergence cannot be demonstrated using the alternating series test.